Hello and welcome to My Astronomy Nights. I'm Derek and in this video I'm looking at NGC 891. Now NGC 891 is a lovely spiral galaxy that we see edge on from our vantage point and it's within the boundaries of the constellation of Andromeda. So with the square of Pegasus working its way south in the early morning, we have Andromeda following suit towards the eastern horizon, we can start looking at those autumn galaxies that are coming back on show. So Andromeda is obviously famous for the Andromeda Galaxy, which is a fantastic wide field object, but if you have a little bit of aperture, NGC 891 is a great target to go and search for. So to locate NGC 891, we're going to start by using the square of Pegasus, and we're going to look for that north eastern star, which is Alpha Rats. Now the square of Pegasus is quite large on the sky, it's a little deceiving when you're looking at your star map, so just to keep in mind that each of those sides is about 12 or 13 degrees, which is larger than your fist at arm's length when you're looking up at the sky. So you have uh, that alpha red star, and then we're going to move on the alpha, beta and gamma stars of Andromeda. They make a line of about 25 degrees long, and they're equidistant as well with Merak in the centre, and they're all a magnitude 2 star. So start with Alpha Rats, work your way over and you'll see Merak and then the next star over again is Almac and that's the one we need to find in GC 891. So we're going to draw a line between that and Algol, the demon star in Perseus which is also a magnitude 2 star and if you move in that direction just about just over 3 degrees you'll see a nice magnitude 6.7 star there that sits just about 20 arc minutes away from NGC 891. So if you get that star in the center of your finder and then into your eyepiece, you'll be able to see, pick up the galaxy pretty easily then. Now NGC 891 is one of William Herschel's discoveries from 1784 and it's just a fantastic example of an edge on galaxy from our vantage point. Now it's almost perfectly so with that tilt being 89.8 degrees towards us. It has a magnitude of 9.9 .9 and it has a long axis of 11.7 .7 arc minutes but then on the other axis then through the bulge it's only two arc minutes um, thick so it really increases that surface brightness having that dramatic tilt towards us. It's also part of the Caldwell catalogue as Caldwell 23 and it's just one of those really really nice galaxies to observe at this time of year. So when you get into autumn, you'll be looking around at Andromeda and its satellite galaxies. So if you want something to put a bit of magnification on or a bit of a challenge, this is a really good one to go for. So within the image, you can see that there's a lovely little star. It's a 6.7 magnitude orange star that you would have used to locate the galaxy. And that sits at about 1500 light years away. And then you have NGC 891 itself sitting at 24 and a half million light years away. But then just below it there in the image, you can see NGC 898. And it's just got a little, um, it's just 1.7 arc minutes by a half an arc minute. But that galaxy is 10 times further away again at somewhere between 250 and 270 million light years away. So it's really interesting to see the depth within that image that you can pick up. Now NGC 898 is within the grasp of a 12 inch telescope or just about so if you advance and above a 12 inch you may be able to pick up this galaxy if you have a really good sky and a really dark night. So for collecting the data for the photo on this one I was actually using my GH5 camera. I picked up this in February so it was just before I got my monochrome camera up and running. So I ran the GH5 on it and I picked it up really well. It would have been in the eastern horizon at the time, but there were, it was still quite dark. It was before the, the long evenings were setting in. So I was able to get a good couple hours data running on it uh, for both the photo and the live view. And it came out really well. It's a lovely part of the sky to photograph because it's just full of stars. So when you get a galaxy in those kind of starry regions, they come out really well. Um, I was using the settings of, I think it was three minute exposures, I was using at ISO 400 for this one. And it was shot on a colour camera, so it was just a one run of images. So in the photographs, you could really bring out the detail of that dust lane and you could really have, have fun with it, trying to tease it out of it. Because there is such a big contrast between the starlight and that dust lane. Even though that dust is like fine smoke, it's, it's, there's just so much of it obscured in it from our vantage point. It makes for a really nice photo. 
For observing this target, I used my 80 millimeter refractor, my eight inch um, Newtonian and my 12 inch. So the first time I was observing this was with my eight inch newt, which was the end of last year into January, before I had it set back up on the Q 6 for photography. And you could pick it up. The dust lane was extremely tricky with an eight inch. I had one really good night and I could just about see it, but the galaxy itself you could see quite well, but the dust lane, it was a lot of averted vision and you had to really give it a lot of time. So I'd say eight is very much on the limit of where you'll get that dust lane. But once I was able to get the 12 inch on it, it was really good to observe in the 12 inch. It has a really good size in the eyepiece. And with averted vision, you could get a really good look at that dust lane. You could almost see it directly on in the center, but averted, you will pick it up. But it's, it's um, you have to get used to the size of the galaxy. It's quite small, so you can throw magnification onto it though really well and it'll hold up. So I was looking at it about 100, between 100 and 200 powers back and forth. And then when you come back out onto your wider eyepiece, then it was, you could, you could pick up a little bit of that detail of the dust lane. There's some wonderful little stars in the region that kind of sit within and in and around the galaxy as well. So it has a lot, a lot of little details to look for. Um, but uh, visually compared to the uh, photographs, there's a big difference in the detail that you're going to see. Now it's also interesting to note when you're observing it, there's another little galaxy. There's a couple of little galaxies that show up in the photo, but there's one that's just within reach if you have a good, good aperture telescope. And that will be NGC 898. If you have anything above a 12 inch, you're going to have a bit of luck with this one. And it has, it's at 40 magnitude, but it is only 1.7 arc minutes by half an arc minute across. So you would be able to pick it up with averted vision if you have a good clear dark night. So observing NGC 891, I use my 200 PDS, my 300 P and my 82 millimeter refractor. With the 82 millimeter refractor, it was very much just visible. It's because it's magnitude 9.9, .9, so I was able to pick it up. It was a tiny little sliver. It was like a little stroke just against the background stars. You couldn't see any more detail or anything, so just it was very small. But then when I moved to the 200 PDS, these, these observations were done at the end of last year. I was able to see that kind of distinctive shape with a little bit of bulging in the center but the, the central dust lane was very much at the, um, at the limit of this telescope. I had a good night of seeing, so it was, it was really just at the limit where you could just, just about make out that there was a dust lane in it. Then this year's observations were done with my 12 inch Dobsonian and I was able to pull out a lot more of that detail. I put a good bit of magnification on it and you could really see that bulge and now it's still faint and diffuse but because the thickness of this galaxy is so narrow it's like a really slender kind of stroke on the sky with that black line running through it. It looks really nice. You do have to tease it out a good bit with averted vision though. Um, compared to say NGC 4565. It's kind of similar to the Sombrero Galaxy in a way because I find uh, from my um, latitude the Sombrero Galaxy you do need to use a good bit of averted vision to, to tease out that dust lane in the center. So uh, if you've observed the Sombrero Galaxy I think this one will be a similar observation and at a similar size as well so the same magnification will get you that detail. When you have your high magnification on it, then you can see those little 11th, 12th magnitude stars that are decorated throughout. There's a lovely little 11th magnitude star that's right out on that southern tip. And there's a couple then, I think, just on the western side. Um, you'll see them well in the image, and then you can try to compare it then when you have it in the eyepiece. So NGC 891 is just a fantastic target to capture in August and September and going in through the winter. It's really well placed with the evenings just getting longer and longer. The square pegasus seems to sit around forever. So you can you get a chance at 891 anytime between now and next February to observe it. And it's just a fantastic little galaxy to find. And I think that um, it's worth revisiting as well because I think the first time you look at it, it seems a little tricky, a little small. But when you come back to it a few times, it becomes quite easier to tease out that dust lane and it becomes a little bit more enjoyable to observe. Thanks so much for watching the video and I look forward to hearing about your observations in the comments. Cheers, guys.